Greetings. Today we're going to talk about how to predict the product of double displacement reactions, specifically the product of precipitation reactions. And basically we want to know this because we want to know what is going to be produced when two soluble substances are mixed together. So let me finish this right here. This is soluble substance and a soluble substance. Will it produce a precipitate? And you already know what a precipitate looks like. You have seen it possibly in the lab or in demonstration. And if you haven't, I will show you in class. Please remind me to do that. All right, so we are going to, first of all, I've written down some rules. How can we do this? How can we predict the product? Number one, identify the ions and write the charges. Pair them up, cation with anion, anion with ca cation with anion. Write the formulas correctly and indicate the precipitate using solubility rules. All right, so we know we're going to mix these two soluble substances. Let's see what is going to happen. All right, so the easiest way to do this is I will first show you that you should write the charges. So I'm going to write the charges of each of these, uh, the polyatomic ion, negative 2, the potassium plus 1, the barium plus 2, the chloride minus 1. Because this is going to help me in the long run to uh, be able to do this. All right, so now I'm going to take the positive ion of the first compound and combine it with the negative ion of the second compound. Remember that the subscripts are not conserved in a reaction, so I'm not going to carry the subscripts. All I'm going to do right now is I'm going to carry the charges, the element or the polyatomic ion and the charges. So that's K plus 1 and Cl minus 1. And I know that positive 1, negative 1 cancels out, and that's going to be my compound. All right, next I am going to combine my positive ion of this side with the negative ion or the negative polyatomic ion of the other compound. So positive first Ba, and I'm going to carry the plus 2 charge over, and then I'm going to take the carbonate, CO3, negative 2. Positive 2, negative 2, they cancel out, so therefore I don't have to worry about that anymore. It is uh, completely correct, a correct uh, formula. All right, so now, all right, I'm going to go back and erase these in order not to confuse the issue, and erase that, and that is your equation. Now, it is not balanced, but we can go back and balance it, but before I do that, and I'm not going to worry about, well, let's, let's do balance. All right, so two potassiums, two potassiums, carbonates, I can use this as a group, one carbonate, one carbonate on the other side, barium, barium, two chlorides, two chlorides, it's all balanced. Now, before I proceed any further in predicting the states or the phases, uh, we are going to have to refer to the solubility rules. The solubility rules are going to allow you to predict which one of these is a precipitate, and if there is one. So, let's, I, I'm going to change my screen here and show you the solubility rules. And then we'll come back here to determine what we have learned. So here we are with our solubility rules, and each one tells you what is soluble and what is not. You have to decipher that, and it is a training, a 
jungle gym for the brain uh, as you work through this. Now, there were two substances that we were working with, and it was KCL, and my product was BACO3. I want to know if these, which ones will be, which one, if any, will be the precipitate in this reaction. So I'm going to look up potassium chloride. Well, let's look. It says all common compounds of group 1 and ammonium ions are soluble. So right away, this is telling me that potassium chloride is going to be a soluble substance. So I'm going to put a cube right there. This is the product of that reaction we were working on on the other board. All right, then I'm going to look barium carbonate. Good look up carbonates. All right, you have to look through the rules, and it says, except for rule one, carbonates, hydroxides, oxides, silicates, and phosphates are insoluble. All right, so we got to look at the rule one to see what this is saying. Rule one says, Rule 1 says that all common compounds are group 1. This is not a group 1 compound. It is a group 2 compound. Therefore, in conclusion, this is the solid. And this is the process that you are going to have to go through in order to determine what the product is. I'm going to give you an equation and I would like you to try this out at home. Using these steps, I would like you to try this reaction and go ahead, write the chemical equation and also go ahead and predict, as we predicted before, this was soluble in water and this would be my precipitate. Now, here's the reaction that I would like you to work on. Silver nitrate plus sodium chloride. Predict the product of this reaction using this method and we will check it in class. All right. See you class.